Hello, Parvati. How are you doing this Hi. morning? I'm sad. Well, who am I talking with right now? Am I talking with the Duchess of Deception? Am I talking with the Mistress of Murder? Am I talking with the Iron Maiden? Which Parvati am I speaking with today? Oh, man. All of those monikers came from John. And he called me the Ice Queen, the Ice Princess, the Iron Maiden. Look, I am, you're talking to Parvati, but I am also all of those and the Black Widow and the Poisoner and all of those things. It's, it was so fun. It was just insane, but also really fun. Well, I want to start with where things ended because you had a bit of a whirlwind day. You're approached by, you know, one of your biggest rivals in the house to say, okay, I don't think it's you. Let's vote for Phaedra. You get to the round table where it seems like it's going in that direction. And then the aforementioned John from the top rope delivers, you know, a bit of a pile drive of information. By the time the votes were coming in, were you surprised at the outcome at all? Or did you feel like the die was already cast? I knew it was coming for me. They'd already been gunning for me for days. You know, I, I was like wandering around the castle by myself, hoping that someone would talk to me. Like, I was like, let's get something going, guys. Like my strategy at the end there was if they all think I'm a traitor, then the only move I have to make is through, um, if people are thinking strategically, they would want to keep the traitor that they know in the house and then get the other traitors out that they're not really sure of. And then in the end, then they can banish the person who they really think is a traitor. So I was like, okay, let me see, is, is anyone thinking this way? So I did approach John and have a conversation with him that was kind of like that, which I think was a, not a good, it wasn't helpful because he was so, um, he was so righteous and caught up in this, role of the faithfuls and the faithful like you'll see this with the guys they were doing this peter bergy john they were like even ct like we would never be traitors because those are the bad guys and we're the good guys we're the saviors of the house even though peter's lying he's doing all the same things that the traitors are doing he's just doing it for the right reason there we go use that bachelor lingo got to bring it back <laughs> uh, i mean Let's go to the Peter of it all, because from our perspective, it really seemed like the beginning of the end for you was this trap that he had laid. He had shared with you and Dan about who had the shield. You had tried to push against going after Bergie that first time. Dan said no. From your perception, is that the case? Do you feel like from then on, it really seemed like I'm on borrowed time? Yeah, that was it. That was the moment. Like if I would have stood my ground harder in the turret and told Dan, like, no, we can get Bergie next time, then I think a lot of things would have been really different. Mm. I mean, in general, what was your dynamic like with Dan and Phaedra? Because you're brought in to this twosome, and we see a couple times it gets a little tense. You know, Phaedra goes after you and Dan for throwing the Bravo Labs under the bus. She gives you some, shall we say, constructive criticism about the way that you're coming across. What was the dynamic like to work together your whole season? Oh, she's fun. She's like such a larger than life character. And she would not, we didn't talk to each other in the castle. So there wasn't much strategy going on with me and Phaedra. And even in the turret, there wasn't strategy. She was performing a part. She was really good at the social game with making relationships with people and keeping herself safe that way. She wasn't thinking like, oh, we got to murder this person because then these dominoes will fall. Um, I was doing that more with Dan, which was really fun because I like thinking like that. I mean, I'm from Survivor, that's the way my mind works. So it was it was an interesting dynamic between the two of them. I feel like I was a good middle ground for both of them because I could straddle both worlds and I could pacify Phaedra when she was really feeling hot headed. And we had great banter in the turret. We had a lot, Phaedra and I had a lot of fun in the turret. I liked <laughs> those moments with her. We could absolutely tell. I mean, you talk about coming from Survivor. I want to speak about alliances a bit because last week, it seemed before this big torch twist happened, ironically enough, given your background, that it seemed like there was the so-and-so Peter's pals and then like this group of leftovers that was mobilizing. I'm curious from your perspective, let's say there was a regular round table. Obviously, Peter's pals were probably coming after you. Do you feel like you would have had the numbers in that moment to get Peter out? Or is this another situation that felt forgotten? 
no, I think I might have because Sandra and I had come up with the same idea independently. I was like, these guys, if there's a trader over there, we don't know, but if there is, then they are going to run the game to the end. And maybe that's why they're so confident that they can do that. Bergie's walking around saying, we are going to be together till the end. I'm like, you wouldn't be saying that unless you knew you were protected. So we were, we were working this kind of like uh, alliance thing, numbers game, kind of, it was very survivory. And I was like, I got to play with what I, what I know at this point. And can we convince these people? So the wild card was sort of Kate. Kate seemed like she didn't, she like was annoyed by Peter and Kevin enough to go with us because that's all she really cared about was killing people who were boring and annoying. So I was like, let's get them. Come on, let's do it. And I think we would have possibly had the numbers had that torch um, event not occurred. But I don't know. So mm. it, it either saved me or it saved Peter that night. Now, listen, you mentioned Sandra. You have made it very clear if uh, online activity is any indicator from the past year that you and she certainly have had some blood that's been decades in the making. You walk out of this, though. I think I peeped your Instagram that uh, you called her your favorite faithful. How did this bridge faithful. end up getting rebuilt? <laughs> Peppermint did it. Peppermint brought us together. I'm so grateful. I think like Peppermint's an icon, like gorgeous, amazing, fabulous. And then brought Sandra and I together. That would not have happened without Peppermint. Like I, I think Sandra and I would have been circling each other and very wary of each other. And since that moment with Peppermint, Sandra and I were like, okay, cool. Like let's do work together and, or let's not come after each other at, at the very least. And that's what happened. I was like, I'm not going to murder Sandra. And Sandra wasn't coming after me. So I was like, great. Let's keep this thing going. I think we have a mutual respect for each other. We're very different people mm. and we're very different players, but we both have come through a lot on Survivor and have done some pretty significantly difficult things in the game. And that merits respect, I think, on both, both of our ends. Last thing I want to ask is just looking at like the online, I'm going to say a claim for you, Parvati. I mean, I'm going to die in the wall survivor fan. I feel like not since the heroes versus villains era, have I really seen just so much admiration for you, obviously with the personal news of you coming out and announcing your relationship as well. It has really felt like 2024 has been the year of Parvati shallow. And I know obviously it's been a lot for you since we first saw you in winners at war a few years ago. What's been your reaction to that? Are you jonesing to do more reality TV now that you kind of like came out of that soft retirement this year? Man, that's nice. I'm feeling emotional about it. It's been such a, um, like a renaissance for me. Cause I've been like, winners at war was a grueling slog and I was a new mom and I was already so depleted and exhausted going out to play that game. And since then, so much has changed in my personal life. So I've been recalibrating as a person for the past two years. And I said it on the in the show, uh, in the last episode where I got banished. That's true. Like I've been going through some stuff and really um, evolving and changing as a person. So to come out and to have, and to play this game and to be like, I am on my heels. I am on my toes. I am like throwing Hail Marys everywhere. I am messy A. Eh? F playing traders like so messy but the fact that the fans enjoyed it and that it's had this like such a fun response from the media and the and I just I'm like overjoyed because it was me just being me and having a as much fun as I could in such a high intensity game and playing with the people that I was playing with like yeah, it was fun for me. I would do something else. I would. I don't really necessarily want to do more of like the emotional warfare manipulation stuff. That's hard for me. But I really enjoyed, I enjoy things that are like a mission-based situation. So something like Dancing with the Stars, I would love to do. Or like Drag Race, if I could like do a lip sync with Rue, I would die. Oh my God. Well, you've got that would... in now. Listen, you've got the Peppermint was able to bring you and Sandra together. I think she could bring you and RuPaul together. It's easy yeah, by comparison. She... Right? Thank you. Uh, well, call me as part of the fans and the media that have been singing your praises. I mean, again, as someone that has watched you since the very beginning, all those years ago. And obviously, again, it's been a lot for you in the past few years, especially to watch you come out 
up quite literally with a plum and be able to, to, I think really build your life in such a significant, healthy way uh, to a point where people have embraced you so much. I think it is something incredibly beautiful. So no matter where we see you next, Parvati, I'm just so glad we, we got to see you make your way to that Scottish castle and truly get to make some fun happen. Thanks, Mike. You're going to make oh, me cry. Oh, so of well, all the best to you and yours. Thank you so much again and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.